Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Barcelona for theCUBE's four day coverage of MWC, Mobile World Congress 2024. I'm John Furrier, your host with Shelly Kramer. We've got a great guest, Gretchen Tinnerman, who's the Vice President and General Manager of US Telco Media and Technology, the industries for Kindrel. Really helping customers trans do the transformation in this transition. Gretchen, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we've been covering you guys since the launch, okay? From the, name, the new name and the new launch, and just what a perfect opportunity is now you guys are building on. Had great success and growth coming out of that. Now with this market, with the AI gif that keeps on giving every day, <laughs> people need help. They you need help. You got platform transitions, new platforms are emerging, the role of data as an advantage, business model changes, cost efficiencies, just so many opportunities, but a lot of challenges. A lot of investment, new implementations are going on. So really we're seeing that clearly in every major industry. That's what you do, right? So We do, all you're, day. You're busy, <laughs> you're busy. So here at MWC, what, what's on your mind? What are you guys doing? Last year you had big news. What's happening this year? Well, give us a quick update on Kindle. We'll go into the questions. Yeah, so, so last year, big announcement with Nokia for our private, private 5G uh, solution at Kindrel. Yesterday we made an important announcement expanding upon that ecosystem uh, with HP and Athonet. So again, expanding upon that ecosystem of providing private wireless 5G LT solutions to our clients, um, not just in the industries of which I support, but, but all of Kindrel. So I think it, it goes to continue to support what our clients, as we've been advising them, and what we're seeing in the market, and what they're asking for us is for us to engage with other partners, um, and as we do, we bring those skills on board and continue to evangelize those with our clients. What's yeah. your role at Kindrel? Define real quick, what's your, what do you oversee? Take us through the, the moving parts, what's going on? You got, what does industries mean, and how is it implemented in today's world? Yes, yeah, so, so my role is to manage our telecommunications, media entertainment, and high technology industries. Three very fast growing and evolving industries for different reasons. Yeah. One, AI, which we're seeing everywhere here, right, at Mobile World Congress. Um, and uh, moved into this role in November. I think it's important, though, to talk a minute about the industries at Kindrel. Yeah. It's something that we have been very intentional about to provide our clients in these industries with, with subject matter experts, meaning we understand, we listen to our clients, we understand the challenges that they're facing in these industries every day, and my team brings to them solutions and offerings, advice yeah. Yeah. Um, to advise, build, and, and deploy those solutions to, um, to solve their challenges. So you help carry the load so that they don't have carry to carry the it by themselves. Yeah, that's awesome. So what kind of trends do you see happening in telco and media and entertainment? Talk about that a little bit. And so um, I, I would say really three similar trends across three really different yeah. industries, right? Um, first one certainly being sustainability, Absolutely. right? Um, how can we help our clients um, build a better planet, right? How can we work with our clients on things like data centers and climate control and power and consumption and uh, we bring the skills to support clients and those challenges around sustainability, really important for them and for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, data. I mean, it's, of it's all over, we're hearing <laughs> it, but, but it's true, right? As we as consumers, willingly provide more data, um, our clients are receiving that consumer data and now saying, what do I do with all of this data? Yeah. And it's not the same data for every consumer and every client, right? Well, and it's beyond just managing the data, it's being able to get the right kind of insights you need to pull from that yes. data and use it strategically. So it's a big, I mean, it's a big challenge Project. and everybody's and wrestling And how to with keep that. it secure, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I would say third is, is transformation. And I think Kindrel is a great story actually for our clients on transformation. We actually call ourselves, refer to ourselves as customer zero. Yeah. We were customer zero for transformation. So yeah. post spin, uh, we have spent our last two, two and a half years yeah. transforming our, our company 
And it's a great example and showing our clients the skills that we have to just, support that. I have some oh, hold, hold, just to make sure we get spin means spin out from the IBM. Spin out from the IBM. Yes. Make sure we yeah. clarify Correct. that. Spin, yes. out, spin out from IBM. So I have, I have a, a lot of friends who work at Kindrel and who, you know, I've been connected to since the spin, right? And one of the things that they have expressed in different conversations is that it's a whole new world from a culture standpoint. You know, IBM is a great company and a gigantic company, but it's really interesting to see sort of the transformation of the culture at Kindrel yeah. as well. I mean, it really is, I'm, I don't know if you've experienced that, but it's something that's palpable from what I hear. I, that, that thrills me yeah. to hear yeah. that. It, yeah. It's been a very, something very intentional. We have done yeah. um, with, with all of the, the leadership and support at Kindrel as, as to what we've, yeah. we've labeled the Kindrel way. Yeah. And it is our culture of how we show up empathetically, yeah. trustful, and thoughtful to our clients. And um, it really it has re-energized the 90,000 employees that we have and yeah, uh, the little startup that you the spun little, out the with little 90, startup that we were in <laughs> 2021 <laughs> um, but it's really the core of who we are yeah. and uh, it it's really important as, as well as um, the inclusive nature of which we're building within Kindrel is also very important and I'm very passionate about that. Yeah, well we talked about that a little bit earlier and I would love for you to share a little bit about, you know, inclusivity sometimes when you start talking about that, especially a lot of times people automatically assume we're talking about men and women and, you know, that sort of spanning that divide in the world, which is not unimportant. But when you're talking about inclusivity and your passion, you look really much broader than that. So talk with us a little bit about some of how you think about inclusivity and what you're doing. I know you're, uh, you're participating in a round table conversation that's happening here in Barcelona tomorrow. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for, for me personally and for Kindrel, inclusivity means we're creating a safe space and environment for everyone. We're creating a welcome environment and we're being very intentional in our recruiting and hiring um, and within our own teams, right, to create uh, inclusive networks for them. Um, and I'm happy to lead the, the Women's Inclusion Network at Kindrel, or KIN as we refer to them. <laughs> and I think it's really important for us to, again, be conscious and be intentional that I am very passionate myself on empowering others, empowering yeah. girls in STEM, yeah. empowering the women that I work with. Um, and uh, we learn from each other, we network with each other, and uh, it's, it's again helps establish a very safe environment for all of us yeah. and um, show others and show others in the industry yeah. that we can do this together as an inclusive company. Absolutely, well strong teams are diverse teams. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I want to get your thoughts on the opportunities that are out there for whether young STEM candidates, one, they're seeing the landscape change. Again, AI is a generational shift here. People, it's getting data, data used to be kind of a boring field <laughs> you know, back when I was in college, but. Not anymore. If you're young right now, if you're, on, if you're young, you're looking at AI as an inflection point. Yes. And there's a huge in-migration of talent, young talent coming in, still it's got skill shortages, so a lot of opportunities. The challenges are skilling up workers, um, the role of how much data is out there, but then also the expectation of success is a big thing we're hearing. So given that expectation that AI is going to be great, the pressure to deliver given some of those challenges is, is huge. How do you see that from a Kindrel standpoint? You guys are helping customers not only cross the chasm, cross that bridge to the future, but build the bridge together. Yeah. So what's that expectation management? Is it at an all time high, is it getting higher? Is it a matching reality? It's getting higher, right? As our customers receive more data from their customers, from their employees, um, it's the skill part our customers need and continue to need help with. Yeah. And the skill around data is spans from where does that data or workload go <laughs> to what hyperscaler, yeah. Yeah. how do I secure it, yeah. how do I provide predictive 
yeah. you know, data and information to improve, improve employee productivity, efficiency, customer engagement, create a better fan experience, right? Yep. And uh, we've made a, uh, an investment in consultants within Kindrel to again, listen to our clients yep. to understand what do they, what can they gain from the data that they're receiving. And uh, by listening to our clients and advising our clients, we can help them through that process of where's the data go, how do I secure it, and how do I improve my experience. And it's a whole new world and the listening's critical because there's knit new problems and opportunities coming down the pike. So I have to ask you, as you look at that success formula, being a trusted advisor is one, that's check the box, you guys know that, that's kind, the Kindrel way. Yeah. But now, Shelly and I were talking about this last night at dinner um, with a bunch of other um, uh, analysts, the role of being a trusted advisor and delivering a service in a market that has got the highest risk management profile, meaning the risk rewards are high too, but if you mess up, AI's got a great upside potential. Right. So having a real provider it's more important than people who just mail it in. So you got to formulate it, you got to listen, then you got to deliver. What, explain the magnitude of this right now in this market. We think this is a time where people need the most help. More transformation going on at higher speeds. Yeah. That's the theme here. Yeah. What's your view of this new advisory consultant service model in this market? And what's different about it? Yeah, I think it's different. It's different for a lot of reasons. But, but I think the main difference is, again, our clients are transforming. Yep. Through this transformation, new data is coming into the environment. Um, how do I act with the data today, and how do I use the same data to improve six months, one year, three years from now? Um, the skill part of that and the people part of that is still sits in the center of AI. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Right? Yeah. And uh, we are the heart of progress. You hear Kindrel, and, and, yeah. and we refer to ourselves as the heart of progress because people are the heart of who we are, we are a people company yeah. um, with the skills to support our clients through their own AI journey because it is a journey. Yeah. And it will continue to be a journey and we will grow with them through that advise and consult engagement yeah. as we have for their cloud journeys and others in the past. Well and the reality of it is this relationship is actually in my opinion more important than what technology solution should we buy because this is complicated. It's yes. more complicated than ever before. And you have to be able to develop a strategy and you have to understand risk mitigation. You have to understand how the role of security plays. So many things and it's really overwhelming to think about. So the most important thing is who's my trusted a vendor partner to go along with my team on this journey. And I think that that's such an, I mean, that's what customers are looking for, is they're looking, looking for a guide. Right, they're know? looking to for us to listen to what their business challenges are, yeah. and to develop use cases to solve them. Yeah. <laughs> technology enables yeah. that. Yeah. Right. The conversation doesn't start with technology, right. yeah. it actually ends with technology. Absolutely. Yeah. What's yeah. interesting is you got the verticals of US telco, media and, and technology, which technology is changing to be technology companies that you partner with and yeah. sell to at the same time. Yeah. So, so I have to ask you, because the common thread in all that is networks, connecting yes. things. Yeah. So I have to ask you, telco specifically, we've heard here on theCUBE from a lot of the luminary guests we had that when asked, what's the impact of AI to telco? And it says, to the device. That's the kind of the common answer. So that means, okay, from the core to the device. Right. All that data is coming in. Right. And that data now could be intellectual property for the telcos and or their customer ecosystem that's growing. So you got open gateway emerging, which is interesting. You got the telcos themselves and the mm -hmm. operators. Your announcement uh, with the private, public, deal that you announced right. yesterday, and pretty amazing, gives seamless mobility. Kind of getting better on the telco side right now for this next wave. How do you see it? It is. Um, I think the telcos have, have a journey ahead of them also. And I think one, that system integrator yeah. like Kindrel, we will find ourselves engaging more with our clients who are the telecommunications providers. You're right, the edge is literally at the edge now. Yeah. The edge is considered that cell phone, right? That is the edge. Yeah. And, uh, and so our, we know our telecommunications 
clients continue to need our consult and advise on that journey to the edge <laughs> for themselves. Um, all of the technologies and the, the spectrums and everything yeah. that's available for network uh, is, is still evolving. Well, and it's about so much more than just your mobile device. I mean, it's your smart devices, it's your smart cities, it's your sensors that are everywhere. Correct. It's not just Correct. limited to a mobile device. So I think that when you think about the realm of that, that's it's a lot. It's endless. Yeah, it really, it is, really endless. is. And it's going to get even more complicated, more sensors. I mean, those numbers right. are crazy. So. Yeah. One of my final questions for you is on the sustainability piece. You mentioned that earlier about saving the world and saving the planet. Thank God <laughs> we're doing it. Let's hope. The GPUs are sucking up a lot of power, okay? So power and cooling, data centers, the scarce resources are everywhere. So you're seeing a lot of that big sustainable conversation happening. How do you guys see that? What's your reaction to the, the constraints around power, uh, power heating and cooling, data center scarcity, um, some real you know, resource intensive challenges yeah. in sustainability. What's the Kindrel position on this? I think, listen, it's a priority for our clients. In fact, it's probably the highest priority for our clients, yeah. right? And not just because many of our clients have sustainability targets, yeah. but that they know they have to do this for their future, for our future, yeah. right, as a planet. Um, and many, again, I go back to even the other challenges that we have with our clients are facing, whether it's transformation, whether it's data, the same with sustainability. Many are in a different part of that Journey. road, yeah. right? They, that challenge ahead of them. And so we ourselves have a sustainability group yep. to advise our clients on our own journey um, and again, kind of meeting the client where they're at and, and building that sustainability roadmap for them to be at the table to talk about their data center strategy, yeah. um, power, consumption, storage, and tie that into sustainability. And uh, that's where I think our, our clients yeah. will, they need to see that improvement, yeah. they yeah. need to see the outcomes of, of that, and it's, it has to be a it's priority. Gonna be it's got to be designed in from the beginning, not bolted on as an correct. afterthought. Not something that's correct. Something. Yeah, that's a key yeah. thing. I like security now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so first of all, congratulations on the round table on the inclusion, diversity, and equity thing you're doing here. Thank you. Um, for the last minute we have left, put a plug in for Kindra. What are you up to? What's your goals? What's going on in the organization? Put a little plug in for what, what you guys are up to. Yeah, so, Listen, we, it has been two and a half years of an exciting journey. My plug is we are continuing to grow the ecosystem to support our clients. Um, the investment that we have made with our people, the skills, the hyperscaler certifications, yeah. the skills around the announcements yesterday and private wireless, everything from RF engineers to consultants to simply listen and advise. Um, we've really have shown up differently and we're continuing to show up differently with a culture that's empathetic. Yep, yep. And uh, yep. I'm really excited what this has in store for us in the future. Gretchen, awesome. thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. We've been Thank following you. your success. You guys have been doing really well. Now with the, this trend, I'm sure <laughs> you're going to be super busy. We will be, yes. We'll, we'll see you next time. Gretchen Tinner in here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier for Shelly Kramer. We'll be right back with more. This is day two of four days of live coverage from the show floor. The videos are up on YouTube immediately right after. See the clips on Twitter, Facebook, and all the social networks. Go to siliconangle.com, check out all the stories. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.